You know, when the Portuguese came here, they, they, are, they were doing it as a forced thing, you know? That's forced? What, yeah, that's okay, why okay. their ruling was Russian. Food. So it was forced? Yeah. So that's it was, why when they came here... So in essence, it was slavery? It was like that. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. <laughs> but you know, we have tried to hide some of that. So the truth of the matter is, this, this was a slave for you. When I arrived in Mombasa, Kenya, I was told one of the popular destinations was Fort Jesus. I was told that Fort Jesus was a trading fort built by the Portuguese exclusively for trading goods. When I heard the name Fort Jesus, red flags immediately went up. Fort Jesus, hmm, what's up with this? I was told that it was not used as a slave fort. According to the structure, no cement which was used also no slaves. So who built this fort? Are local people, Swahili, more than 4,000 workers. And so this fort has more than 426 years. But according to the structure, no cement which was used, also no slaves which were used for constructing the fort. Hmm. Now, when I discovered that the Portuguese built Fort Jesus using the labor of locals and they were paid with food, it didn't immediately register that something sounded wrong about this. After all, the kind-hearted Portuguese explorers would love to share their food with these local citizens. <laughs> yeah, okay. After about 20 minutes into the tour, a question came to mind. Why would people who were indigenous in a land need to be paid with food? While imports of special goods was not and is still not uncommon, something didn't add up. And then I pressed the tour guide a bit more and finally, got to what appeared to be the truth. Why would they need to work for food if they were already indigenous to this land? Why would they need them to come and work for food? Why not pay them wages instead of food? Yeah, but that time, first of all, there's no currency of money. Right, right, right. So there is like a trade, like, to change something to something. Uh -huh. And also, Portuguese are the ones who came, during that time, that the ones who used to come with plantation, especially like rice, maize, gubas. This okay. plantation came in during Portuguese time. Okay. The local, they didn't know even how to plant. So what were the locals eating before? Uh, they were fishermen, fisheries. So why did they need to work and build this for food if they were already fishermen? Yeah, so that would make plenty of food for them. That's why, you know, when the Portuguese came here, they, they, are, they were doing as a forced thing, you know? A that's forced? What, yeah, that's okay, why okay. their ruling was Russian food. So it was forced. Yeah. I then had another question. After he acknowledged that it was by force, he then proceeded to spill the real beans on everything. So in essence, it was slavery. It was like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I, but you know, we have tried to hide some of that. Oh, 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 oh. Here's the concern. If someone does not stop him and ask those specific questions, the story will go unchecked. That same story will spread as if it's accurate, but it's not. The government say no need to keep so that people can see what happens here. Whoa. Yeah, because, you know, sometimes it's not, not a good feeling, especially when people see like that. So there were pictures that were up in there? Yeah, a lot of people. And they up, and how the people were treated. And then they said, take them down. Even oh, like visitors either? here, when they come, they see such pictures, you know, some they feel like back in with their hearts. They should. They should. They should. They should. They should. Like it was, was it, was it? Africans who felt that way? Yeah, they're, they're Africans. The colors were black people. And they said, take it down. Who were the people who said, take it down? Sometimes visitors when they come. What type of visitors? Any visitor when they see, even the white when they see, they don't want to see something. Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> so would, would, would African visitors say they didn't want to see it? Some, because they also want again to, ah, no, but majority are the white. white. Mm. Even us when we do this, history, you are told that we know so that it's not just like a slave trade, you know. Mm -hmm. But truthfully, all this inside, there was a slave trade. Right. West that, Africa, East that, Africa, it cannot be here. Well, I appreciate your honesty. So why did the red flags go up initially? When I learned that the Portuguese built the fort and it was named Fort Jesus, I smelled a rat. What many fail to realize is the role of the Catholic Church and the Portuguese, along with the Protestant Anglican British Church, in the role of transatlantic slavery in Africa, continent-wide. Uh, you say it again? Church. This is the church? Right here. Oh, this was the church right here, right in the middle. In the middle. 
Listen so to this one. See how it goes like this? Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's the pulpit right there. That's the pulpit right there. Yeah, it's a pulpit. Right in the middle of the fort. Of the fort. And also, it used to have a roof. Uh -huh. When the rainfall collects the rainwater mm -hmm. and enter in this well, which was the reservoir collecting the rainwater going down to the well. Okay. So this is the Catholic Church. Here. The Arabs had already been using their form of chattel slavery in East Africa, and it was spreading into Central, West, and North Africa. Although many are in denial, Arab invaders forced Islam on the indigenous people of the lands they conquered. The Catholics and Protestant Anglicans did the same thing. In my travel, a recurring theme of forced religious conversion seemed to be a popular tactic for psychological population behavioral control. In the case of Fort Jesus, it was eerily similar to Fort Axum, Fort Apollonia, and Elmina Slave Dungeon in Ghana. The reason why this is important is because the attempt to rewrite history is at an all-time high. Millions of people are being miseducated on multiple levels. East Africa is just as important as West Africa when understanding the broader context of slavery in Africa over the past 500 years. Unfortunately, when many people mention the topic, it is usually mentioned from an American context. Sadly, many people who still endure the abuses and mistreatments of those same Arab countries come from East and West Africa. Domestic workers from West and East Africa, as well as the Philippines and other Asian countries, have been forced to give up their passports while working in certain Arab countries. As a result, they are exposed to all kinds of mistreatment because they have no way of leaving the country. Not to mention the human slave trade that is reported to still be occurring in Libya and other North African regions. The reason why all of this is important is because we have been misinformed by a tremendous amount of bad information. As I travel the world, I've learned the importance of fact-checking the sources of information I receive no matter where I go. In the case of Fort Jesus, I knew the story they were telling me didn't sound right because of my travels. The Portuguese had a pattern and it did not change from one coast of Africa to the other. My encouragement is for you to see for yourself. This way you can draw your own conclusions. Until next time, subscribe, like, share. It's Maximum Impact with Jay Cameron. Adventures of Darren and Destiny. And Darren and Destiny are twin brother and sister. And you go on their adventures throughout the African diaspora, meaning so African diaspora destinations, primarily focused in Africa, but we go to South America, we're gonna to go to the Caribbean. Their first book is going to take you to Ghana. And then we're gonna go on a safari. And from there, we're gonna to go to Ethiopia. And then we go to Salvador, Brazil. And what the goal is, is to be able to inspire curiosity in the continent of Africa, in our children from a very young age, and to really tell a more accurate story. Most of our children are exposed to negative images, late night infomercials about how bad things are, everybody's sick, everybody's poor, everyone's uneducated, but that's simply not true. So what Darren and Destiny and their family do is they go to different African destinations. They are learning about these different places. You're beginning to see positive images, but still telling the truth. I mean, that's the important thing, to tell the truth about some of the things that have occurred. But it's all done on a children's level so they begin to understand it. And it begins to pique their curiosity. They begin to learn more. And hopefully one day they will want to explore and visit the continent of Africa and its many countries. There's just so much that Darren and Destiny are able to do and as they're doing it, it's, it's like they begin to open the minds of a, a new generation and they don't get bombarded and indoctrinated with negativity. They're actually able to see positivity and inspiring images and messages about the African diaspora as well as those who are still indigenous to the continent of Africa and they begin to learn more and, uh, and just see things differently. So I'm excited about introducing the adventures of Darren and Destiny.